How you doing? And actually, here? if uh, Hi, I'll retweet you or whatever when you put this out, I'll share it. So if anyone's yeah. watching this that doesn't know Carl, I'll give you a little introduction on Carl. Is this cool right now? Oh, sh okay. Fun? The tables have turned. So basically, if there was like, I mean, I'll always, I'm grinding the most here. No, I don't see anyone putting in more volume than me. But I'd say if you had to pick a second guy, this is the Tampa guy who is grinding like I try to do. Except he takes some days off, which, I mean... You don't know what a day off is. To each their own, but, um, yeah, Carl basically does the same shit as me in Tampa. He's been doing it longer than me. And, uh, yeah, you got anything else? What do we call you? Damn, I didn't expect that part. I like it. Um, man, after you, after you left Tampa, the bar was set low. Like, you were the guy we are trying to catch up. As far as like work ethic, seven days a week in the no trenches. One, no one's got the work ethic. No days work off. Ethic, I mean, if I took I a day off, I would have to apologize. I would have to like text Jeremy and be like, Jeremy, I'm taking a day off. What's going on? And of course, I expect to hear. I mean, I shouldn't want you there because I want the people that don't know what's going on playing. But I would be disappointed when I look around in this daily and I don't see you. Because it's like, man. what the fuck are you doing, man? You're not... You're not grinding. What are you doing? And you're telling me, oh, I got to catch up on sleep. Got to go to the gym, this, that. I don't care. No excuses. So no you got to fix that. I don't what know if you're machine, still like man. that. You're a, you're a machine. We're going to get to that part as far as mental game. How do you do it seven days a week? I mean, your work ethic showed. The results are insane. What you're doing, I don't think d -Nags, I don't think any of the big names can do what you're doing, but we're going to get to that part. Okay, let's start with a little, little bit of background for the people that don't know. They don't know who who the uh, the Wind Crusher is. Just a little background. Actually, how you hold with up. With this whole Wind Crusher thing, big misconception. I have definitely won a lot more money at the Venetian than I have at the Wind. It's probably not close. I don't know the exact numbers. I haven't looked, but I have, am definitely, I think I have more first place finishes at the win, but smaller tournaments. I am definitely up more money and have a bigger ROI at the Venetian. That is for sure. And I probably, I want to say I play at the Venetian more. It's very close. I de actually, no, I play at the Venetian more. But I'm known as this win guy. So why a, why I'm do you think uh, the win is giving you recognition more than the Venetian? Is it uh, less tweeting, less uh, social media on their part? I, well, you do the winner's photos. And I just happen to have more first place finishes at the win. But in general, the Venetian has bigger tournaments, bigger fields, bigger money. So, I mean, the bigger fields are going to make it harder to close out and get first place, you know? When I tried to get Yi to put the winner pictures on Twitter, I got some resistance at first, but now they're doing it. Even if you win an $80 tournament, they're tweeting about it. You, you got to tell them the anyone can win thing got to go. Anyone can win. Man, I tried. Even Yi. I don't know who's posting these pictures, but it's like you're almost fucking making fun of the person that won. That's a good point. Uh, the hashtag, they use it for slots and like, you know, in slots, anyone can win, literally. So I they're using the so. same format from the slots to poker and I told Yi, he sent the email to, they're sending the, they're tweeting from uh, Immokalee, I think, and they didn't do anything about it. Every picture still, and I made a comment about it. There was a whole thread about it. People talking shit about that anyone can win, but it's still a thing, I guess. Yeah, anyone and uh, actually we mentioned Yi. Shout out Yi, because I know in some recent podcasts from not anything recently, but let's say six months, eight months ago, whatever. When I was doing a lot of podcasts, I I wouldn't say I called out Hard Rock Tampa, but I I don't think they're doing shit right, and I said that. But the one guy who does everything he can that I know of in that place is Yee. He is the GOAT. He, Yee is incredible. So if I said anything bad about Hard Rock, in no way was it to Yee. I tip my cap to Yee. He's the best wow. employee they got over there that I know. So don't edit that out. Put no, that's gonna there. be that's gonna be probably the, the front front and center. Yee Hats is off the man. Shout out Yee. Shout out to Yee. Wow, he's gonna see that on Twitter. He's gonna be happy. Because people think yeah. he's in control of shit that he's not in control. I'm of. a fan of Yee. He gets a lot of hate. Uh, he gets a lot of hate. I'm not sure why. I think it, it comes with the territory. But I'm a, I'm a the fan people of that shit. are hating him think that he's in control of everything right. in that poker room. 
he's Agreed. the tournament director. He he makes the structures and whatnot of the tournaments. He doesn't control the poker room, which people don't understand. He has to jump hoops for sure to to get shit done. He has bosses. It does. It's he not does. whatever he says goes. That's not how it works. He does. All right, let's fire up some questions. This is interesting, but this can go on for like a whole hour. Let's fire up some poker questions. Just give us a short background. How you started in poker? What attracted you to the game? Uh, when did you start? At what age? Um. All right. I was a degenerate gambler in middle school and high school with my group of friends. Um. We would gamble on anything. Like next lady that comes across that corner. What color is her shirt? Hundred dollars. Stuff like that. Anything. Um. I'm from New York came to college in Florida, University of Tampa, about 10 minutes away from the Hard Rock. Um, let's see, you gotta be 21 to gamble there, 18 to play poker. That's how they got me. So my only choice was poker. So I'm playing 1-1, one, one, no limit, $100 max. $40 min, $100 max. What year was that? That was, I went to college in August of 2014. So this was probably sometime 2015, early 2015, I found it. So how did you learn the game? How did you know poker? I literally never played poker until I showed up to the casino and played 1-1 one, one, no limit and lost money every single day for probably two, three months. Uh, who, like, you don't just willy-nilly go to the casino and sit down at a table. It must have, was it a friend that told you? Did you go with a friend? Like, who introduced you to the game? I love you gambling know. and mm -hmm. somehow, I remember my first like my first semester in college I didn't even know about a casino close by so I was doing the whole college thing you know go out whatever no I was gambling but like with my friends in the dorm type stuff nothing for real someone said something about going to the casino and I was like there's a casino like I heard the word casino and like I'm in I'm all in so uh yeah, me and like five, six friends the first time, we were all excited. Like, we're gonna clean them out, let's go. We all probably got like 300 bucks on us. Like, all excited to play poker. At this point, I don't think we played any home games before then. I think we first did it at the casino. This is my question. Like, you can't say I just went to the casino. Like me, I got introduced in, on Zenga. I was working at a store, managing a liquor store. Uh, my buddy introduced me to poker. Like he taught me what a flush is, what a straight is, and I fell in love right away. Yeah, so no, I, 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 went, in, I went in knowing nothing. I you had no clue what poker is. You just sat down at the table, start firing. Yes, I was. It was a hundred dollar max, and I'm guessing I just limp called every single hand. If I had to guess, I don't exactly you remember. No clue what you're doing. You're just putting chips in the middle. Like I had no. I'm drawing you know stone what, dead. What? I'm drawing stone dead. I'm stone playing. dead. I um. Yeah, I mean, I remember, obviously at first I knew nothing. And as I kept playing and kept losing, I'm learning little by little. And I remember I used to show up and let's say I bring $300. I got, actually, I don't even have three bullets. I have infinite bullets because I'm buying in for the mint. So I'm coming in with 40. So I'll never forget, I'm losing every time. And on my last buy-in, every day it was the same shit. I come in with the 40. And the second I win a pot, I go south. I go south 20 bucks to put it in my pocket so that I got money for the cab when I get belted to go back to campus. So firing multiple bullets was from the get-go, right out of the gate. I mean, it's just like I'm buying in with $40. I'm never going to win. I'm always going to lose in the end. Even if I turn that 40 into 120, it's going to turn into zero soon. So I don't know what I'm doing. It's almost like you know the outcome. Question. Was your dad a gambler? Like, was it in the family? Normally, they say gambling is like a gene, like you carry it with you. Yeah, my, um, I mean, my dad's not, like, nowadays, he doesn't gamble or anything, but supposedly as a kid, he was, uh, he was a little DJ. Were you around any gambling when you were growing up? Six, seven years old, eight years old, did they play poker at the house? No. Was your dad talking about sports betting? Like, what, what type of gambling was he doing back in the day? None of that, not for my parents. Just, I got it from my friends in, like, middle school. We would just gamble on anything. Damn. Look so yeah, I pretty mind. much I learned bank. poker playing that 1-1. One, one. Eventually started, I don't remember how long it took me to start winning, but it definitely took some time. 
and I became obsessed with it. So See, this um, is a story I can relate to. When I talked with Clyde, uh, the story with Clyde, I love Clyde, but like he said that he he never had a losing year. That's not even relatable. Like I had four or five losing years before I started break even and then I mean, no, I don't think I had a like 12 month losing year, but I would say I'm playing 1-1 versus idiots. So I would say I probably the first lost year, there was no way you were break even the first year. It had to be losing year. Nobody wins the first no. year. It's like impossible. You I will no tell, I will tell you for sure I had probably lost let's say 3 months straight. And then I started like and every time after I lose, I'm coming home and I'm watching high stakes poker on YouTube or something. Eventually, I started either breaking even or winning a little bit in one one. And I remember when I got to five thousand, when I had five thousand dollars, I started one two. And then when I got to twenty thousand, wait. Oh, so here you started on the upswing. How long did it take before you 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 were like had no clue what you're doing in 2014? How long did it take for you to get the break even? I would say I probably lost for three months and then I went home for the summer after college and I uh -huh. didn't play poker that summer. I'm gambling with my friends on everything, but we're not playing poker. But when I'm home, I'm watching poker on YouTube and I was so excited to get back to school sophomore year and ju but just for the casino. Like so I didn't fell in love with the game right out, of, right out of the gate. Yes. But what drove me, I swear, and I'm the same like this to this day, which is it, I don't really I think I'm kind of like backwards when I'm losing I'm more into it it's like I, like I have the itch I need to play again I need to play I need to play where when I'm winning and I'm like hot I'm like uh, all right you like the challenge that's 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 yeah. our mentality we always want to beat the game that's like gambling any game it's it's uh, sometimes it's chasing losses but uh, deep down we it's not about liking the pain it's about the challenge you want to beat that game you're almost mad that I you think, lost I and you want to make like it up um, What's that? i think deep down we all like the pain i mean if you're playing tournament poker you probably somewhat enjoy pain like uh, i don't know if this is a good example but it is a good it's true it is true we do I was like gonna the compare it to something but you know what i'm gonna hold off on this comparison because it might be a little bit off here so never mind. Continue. Uh, where are you going with this? Was it going sexual? What's 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 going on? It was going sexual. It was going sexual. We're not going to talk I, about it. I we're think it's masochistic. I don't know what the ex exact the word for it. Like somebody, some some people that like the pain. Most most girls love being choked. I don't know why they're not. It is a thing. Yeah, it's about they like the pain. It's for about whatever reason, being dominated. We like the pain. It is. But this is going the the wrong. The we wrong play tournaments. Way. We like the pain. If we you don't do like, like pain. If you don't like pain, play cash. That's our it's our thing of getting choked. Is is the pain of losing. Yeah. Um, okay, let's keep it PG thirteen. There's a Jamie Smith asked a funny question. It's kind of crazy it. that you uh you knew where I was going with that. It's kind of well because you changed the subject. What else would it be? Um, and before you continue with the actually, special. go. I'll let you ask your question. No, go ahead. Go ahead. What were you going to no, say? No, I know where this is going. Go ask your question. Okay. Um, these are boring questions, but we'll fire them real quick. And then we're going to go to the um, see what the thread on Facebook, uh, what kind of questions they're asking. Okay. Um, I, I want to dive deep later on of what's going on with you lately and why that sick upswing, what's going on. But let's fire up some simple I'm questions. I'm cheating. Don't you read Twitter? I'm cheating. cheating. Of course, uh, that has to be cheating involved. What's your first? Uh, when was your first winning year? In tournaments? Yes, or poker in general. So you started 2014. What What was the year that was, you know, you had positive numbers on the? And when did you start tracking? By the way, I started tracking when I became professional after college. I put it in quotes because so after college, to be pros and all this shit. I um yeah I don't know I started tracking after college when I was relying on it strictly for money. So my what only year was that? Oh. What? what? What year was that? Uh, I graduated May 2018, so we'll say June 2018. 2018. So when you say professional means no other means of income, poker was it? Yes, but a lot of people say they're professionals when no offense, there's zero shot they're profitable. 
in the game. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, some people claim they're professionals and they have like 15k on hand and mob after seven years of grinding. I don't to know. Me, how... Professional means it's your only source of income and you're making money doing it. Is how I would. Put you're it. covering bills and you have extra money on the side. That's a professional. It's it's you're it's covering all your, your bills. Your way of life. I guess that's how yeah. I would. Yeah, and you have money on the side for a bankroll. Yeah. As, uh, another question that comes up a lot: Do you have separate bankrolls as far as like expenses and uh, poker bankroll, or is it all this all bunched up in one? Um, or have you ever done that? No, I keep everything together. However, I don't know if you want to get into this later or what. I now kind of have two bankrolls, sort of, because I have backing for bigger events, mm -hmm. and then I play on my own in my typical buy-ins. So I basically keep two separate numbers. It's basically like two different banks. Uh, some guy a long time ago said something. He said, must be nice. And I'm going to quote him. Must be nice to have two bankrolls. Well, I'm yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So you have a bankroll for the bigger buy-ins. I have my own money that bills, poker, whatever. And then I have a separate account that is funded by my backer that when I'm playing a buy-in over X amount, I mm -hmm. take the money from there to buy-in and whatnot. And how's the accountability? Is it like you snap a picture of the receipt and say, hey, I'm firing this today and it's on you, like this, you're part of this? Or how does our, it work? Our deal is just any buy-in I play over X amount, they have. So there's no yeah. like, hey, do you have this? If it's over X amount, it's theirs. When do you give the heads up? Like at the buy-in or a day prior? Um, I keep all my tournament slips and I just snap a picture of, all right, the back, I mean, I'm sure this is known. The backer is Daniel Negreanu. And what I do is I, let's say I buy in and they give you a tournament ticket. I take a picture of the ticket and I send it to his assistant. And his right. assistant has a whole spreadsheet. What's your relationship with Daniel besides business, besides sending the picture to his assistant? Is there a personal relationship? Like, you, you ever discuss hand history? Did, did he yeah. ever talk about coaching? Um, I talk to him, I'd say, five, six days a week. So, pretty much every day. Damn. It's, uh, him and Josh Arie, you know who that is? Yeah, of course. So, they, they chop it. So I get 50% and they have the other 50. I don't know what their split is, but I know Daniel has more, but I don't know what it is. And um, yeah, we have a group chat, the three of us. And you could, like I got sent the WSOP schedule from them like, hey, and it's is not it out yet, but they just like oh, sent yeah. it to me. Like, I don't know, we just bullshit in there. Um, if I have a question on a hand, I could type it in there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like having a group chat with your friend. It's awesome. Who, who do you think is more studied, the Negrano or Arya? Arya is probably not studied whatsoever in No Limit Holdem. He's a field really? player. He's like, he's somewhat like me, Jesse Lonis. Like, we're, we're not running solves. We're just feel. Let's go. Okay, that's a question And whenever you. there's a hand in that chat, Negrano and Arya are never in agreement. Whenever there's what in the chat? Like a hand history. They're never in agreement. No, because they play two totally different ways. Okay, question. I mean, these days, uh, back in the day, I always say it, you would, you have a hand that you're not sure of. You would ask like three, four poker friends and everybody would have an opinion and you would just go with your gut who's right and who's wrong. These days, you just plug it in GTO wizard. You know what the GTO solve is. And then, I mean, some exploitative stuff, even if the solver says like, check call every time and you know, in live setting, you know that like check raise would work better, but at least you know what the GTO solution is. So when they're arguing, are you plugging in? And, it, and it's, not, it's not arguing, it's just like, different. I'll, let's say I'll text the hand, Daniel texts hands too, honestly. Like, mm -hmm. I'll, I remember during the 300K to super high roller ball, I'm sitting playing a 400 at Venetian, and I check my phone, and it's literally a text from Negranu asking me what I would have done in this hand versus bottom out. Imagine, imagine a year ago when I was living in Tampa, if I told you, yeah, you know, me and Negranu talk hands. That's sick. Is it the hand that he laid down? Yeah. There was a hand I watched that he laid he had, down. He had the turn. aces. You talking about that? He had, he had aces? No, oh, the hand was, was his hand not, uh, did they not say what he had? 
and no, it's might need to edit this out. But uh, it's on RFID. Uh, he had a no. top fair, top fair, uh, not flush draw. Oh, uh, no, the flop was checked. It was it was Bonimo and this. It was Bonimo, him, and a third player on the button. Yeah, we're talking and, about. Japan. And Bonimo turned trips. It was uh, Ace King board, I think, and and Negrano had the top pair. Oh yeah, yeah. King on the turn. King on the turn, and uh, Negrano made a sick fold. Snap. That fold. was a sick fold. Snap that fold. was sick, man. His. But, uh, yeah, I'm talking about a different hand. Yes. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, Difference between two hundred dollar buy-ins at the Hard Rock and Poker Go Studios ten K plus. What are you doing different? Is your mindset the same? Is your strategy like me? I can give you like when sometimes people come up to me, they'll be like, "Oh, I'm playing a main event of fifteen hundred buy-in somewhere. What should I do different?" Uh, Doc Polk said it once. Like, what am I gonna tell you? Like, uh, open tens uh, uh, plus Ace King and just fold everything else. It's your strategy should be the same. Like. You should be prepared to every tournament and the only different and like exploitative play is like you're not going to have a lot of limp pots but that's a, and people are studied a little bit more you have to have more balance that's a there's not much difference so what's your take on it um i would actually say and i hate i hate that this has happened but it has came to the point where i don't know if i can play the 200s anymore not because of the money it has nothing to do with money it's the what's the word a mix of the table talk and the i'll just give you an example and tell you how i know exactly what you're talking about but go ahead no and actually i've seen you do this before and obviously not often or anything but i have seen you do it and i'm sure i did it in the past let's say i uh Let's say I five bet rip seven deuce off into your aces pre-flop, right? And I win the hand. Two pair. Yeah. Let's say this happens at Poker Go and, I don't know, Fox and had the aces. No you comment. know what's going to happen after that hand? Nothing. Nobody says a word about it. Nobody Fox says a word. Fox and will tap the table and say, GG, good luck. And let's say that happens in a 200. You are going to hear about how fucking lucky you are. The what whole casino. You are. The whole casino is gonna be talking whole about. analysis. You're just gonna hear stories about this hand. Fish. Fish. The you're end gonna of get called fish. Even the people at the window, they the next day, like, oh, this is the fish that. Yeah. You know, five bed jam, seven deuce into eight. It's a mindset thing. The people playing these small, smaller buy-in tournaments in general just are horrible sports because they don't understand like the variance in the game. Like, it's just. I, um, I can't do that anymore with the... Because I'm starting to, like, the other day. Great example. This guy gets in aces. I'm playing the, uh... I'm playing a 240 at win. This guy gets in aces. First king-queen. Oh, some, like, 70-year-old Chinese sweet lady has the king-queen and she bangs it on him, right? All in print. And she's clapping all happy, like, good for her, let's go, you know? And this guy says... Why, why are you celebrating? You got so lucky. Like, that's why you'll never win. Like, I'm like I look at the guy go, I'm like, you shouldn't be playing. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you're just a bad sport. You shouldn't be here. And like, I'm starting to get into it with people now because I just can't, I can't sit here and watch this anymore. Like, you know what? Enough. Okay. I have a story at that. I, there are some rooms here in Tampa that I can't play in just because of watching stuff like this and the table talk yeah. and it's the same as far as like uh opening 10x with aces talking about how they lost a hand you know back in the day uh, it's, like, it's like you're surrounded by eight jimmy farms so you can't do it oh damn bang bang. bang 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 so uh, the table talk the manners the the talk after at showdown all these stuff it's hard to take uh, at hard rock it doesn't happen as much it's mostly it, the, it the little rooms and they might have the little room might have a better value way better value less rake uh event but, but just it's miserable, that, it's miserable, miserable. I, i've tried it and i'm not going to name the room i played there and the lack of respect for the game and the shit that they show up with at showdown you look at Shota and you're saying, what the fuck, like seven, eight times, like what? No yeah, thought. But you see, I want to be clear. I'm not saying that I've about had it with these 200 because of the poker. I think we all pay the buy-in. 
everybody can play however they want to play. You can't get mad at somebody for playing like poorly or a different type of style, whatever. But what I can, that's basically, I don't want to play those low buy-ins anymore because strictly of the table talk and how bad of sports people are. It has nothing to do with me thinking I'm too good or there's not enough money in this tournament. Nothing to do with that. It's no, strictly I mean, the table. That's that's what you've been advocating the whole time, that you always you know, go in those 200 buy-ins and you have the same amount of focus as in a 10K. So that's your signature. Nobody, yeah. first of all, what you did, really nobody ever did before you. Somebody becoming famous from playing $200 dailies, it's never been done before. I, I don't gotta, know if we go famous. Oh, you're 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 on your way there. I mean, everybody knows Jeremy Becker now. Don't don't get humble on me. Difference. Okay, um, let's get into tells because uh, we have a lot of questions still, and we're gonna go to the feed and see what they have. What tells do you ri- rely on the most? Like the tell that made you the most money. Uh, you don't have to share the secret. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm sorry, but this is how I make my living. I'm not telling this. Oh, okay. can't do it. Can't okay, do it. Do- but I'll say that there are two things. That I swear to God, it's a 100% like, like they either have it or they're bluffing. Like, it's undefeated. Undefeated. There You're are two share? things that I've seen people do that when they do this, they are either A, always bluffing or B, always have it. And it's it's not like 99 and 1, it's like a 1,000 and 0. Were you going to share or no? I'm not sharing. You're not sharing, but there's like one tell that's like. I will like... say I was I found that I may have, in certain spots, some sort of live tell, and I am now trying to cover it up a little bit. You get scrutinized a lot, by the way. A lot of players come up to me. They be like, "Oh, Jeremy, you know, you're at the top now, and and anything, any leak that you might have, they're gonna look at it and say, oh, fish." Come, come play me, take my money, please. Come, exactly. Come, exactly. Come, come play. Exactly. I have another question for you for later too, as far as like what you're doing different. But yeah. this thing, a, a kid at, at the table, he's like, oh, Jeremy did this. He's going to know who he is right now. He said he did this with his lips when he was bluffing. I'm like, damn, fish. He can't, he'll never make it in the big vines. He said yeah, you, you perked it. your lips. You yeah. went like this when you were bluffing against uh, the bluff against Lonus. When you had the queen nine, queen nine that, hand? No, I had king nine, he had jack, or jack ten. Jack ten, king nine, yeah. yeah. That hand that, keeps me up at night. Um, I think it was standard. It was a signature move from you on the river. I almost like saw it coming before it happened. And then yeah. his call makes sense too, just because. Um, Yeah, I guess if you're playing against me, take a look at my lips as I'm betting rivers and, and it's it. easy. Do you perk your lips? We are calling, we're calling I, everything. I guess so. Yeah, I might. Uh, they might be onto something there. Uh, uh, okay. So tells you're not giving us anything. We're in the we're in the dark. Can't do we're, it. we're in the dark. Uh, how do you think you're perceived at the table? Do you think you have any? Do you have any tells? Like watching yourself on the feed later on? Are you like analyzing anything? Like if you're giving off any tells, uh, you're or you think you have tells or no? And what's up with the glasses? Do you think? You talked about the having putting glasses on and how your results improved. Um, my my results didn't improve with glasses. What uh, what's the thing? Sure, I'm, that's the thing. People ask me about one thing, like one aspect. Is is okay today in the group? It's uh, a bunch of people I'm coaching, and they're actually you know they're on different levels. They ask me, is he being aggressive? Like they don't understand that poker. You're not, is not- playing tournament poker aggressively. You will never win. If you're not paying poker aggressively, you'll never win. I always say it, but the thing I got, is, I got a few. Uh, I'm not giving any examples, but you have to. If you are scared to bust, if you're playing a poker tournament and you're scared to bust, I would bet my last dollar that you will never get first place ever. I promise. This is, this is Jimmy Farnsworth uh, tactic from now on. Is this holding is, uh, on. Here, I'll holding talk about on. Real quick. leave with the chips, so he won't bust. People like talking about how sometimes I'm in for a few bullets from time to time, right? Oh, we're going to talk about it. When you left to Vegas, you know... Well, let me... Uh, I'm going to tell talk about this. So, what people don't know, because the day ones of these things aren't stream, is let's say I'm playing at Poker Go, right? Typically, in most of the series, you're allowed two re-entries per day. So, three total bullets is Poker Go? What, what you're allowed. And Poker Go? 
Yeah. But you're talking, they only have two entries. You're three, two re-entries. Two re-entries, okay. Typically, I, I remember I there was that. one series where it was unlimited, but typically you're allowed three per day total. And name your favorite player. I promise you, they probably average 2.5 bullets per day. I promise you. Because you know what? The best players in the world understand that it's a tournament and you have to be all in a lot. Because when you want to try to win the match, you want to try to make your opponents fold at times. You're su In tournaments, you're supposed to be all in a ton. Like, it, that's just the game. Especially early stages. You want... If you get three stacks early, you're going deep. When when re-entry period is open, you should be going bet, bet, chub very, very often. I mean, re-entry open and not open, whatever, but just in general. But people think like, oh, I'm only, it's all relative. Like, oh, Jeremy fires a lot of bullets sometimes. Like, who's people's favorite, or who's supposedly the best in the world? Like, Bonomo? Boxing of the U.S. people. I'm not talking about like Marta Rose. Bonomo, Davey, the, the people that are playing the high rollers. And every single person in those high rollers are in for three bullets very, 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 very often. And that is okay. There is nothing wrong I mean, with that's, that. That's standard stuff. It's an aspect of the game. Like you said, early levels, you have to go for it and try to double up and triple up so you can have a deep run. They're not playing, the, they're not playing the, the 20 big blind short stack before huh? when the registration is open sorry they're not playing the 2015 big blind short stack strategy when the well, registration they, they is for open. sure they for sure will if their last bullet is a max late reg and that's what they have they'll play it perfect but i'll say i remember the first time i ever played in there it was the poker masters in september and i'll never forget because it's all relative so to me i'll fire three bullets and a fucking 600 right away whatever I'm seeing in this ten thousand five hundred dollar buy-in, every literally everybody's in three bullets by the end of level one. It's like sick shit, but what it's all the, relative. What was the buy-in? Ten five. Ten five. Okay, I mean, and everyone's just in for three immediately. It doesn't matter. Everyone's gambling early, trying to get chips, and then on their third bullet, they're gonna play great. Not saying they're not playing great on their first two, but they're fucking going for it. I mean, if you have the bankroll to do it, why not? I don't see why not. Try to get... It's, it's not like the plan is, hey, I'm going to show up today and buy in three times. Right, But right. you know what? If there's a good spot and you need to be all in on this river to try to make your opponent fold or whatever, like, you're going to do it. And if they call, like, GG, I'll see you soon. Okay, let's move on. Uh, players that are hard to play against. Uh, I'm not gonna uh, say in the dailies. I'm gonna say more in the high rollers. Not high roll. The poker, poker go studio stuff. To me, five Ks, ten Ks. Yeah, somebody that's like that was really tough to play against. I would say for me personally, um, two players come to mind. I would mm -hmm. say Martyrosian. I've played against a couple times. Uh, Arthur was in the states. A that client man mentioned him yesterday in the pod. That man is sick. He is sick. He is like, if there is any dead money in that pot, pre-flop, like he will be squeezing. I promise you. If it's open and call, he he will be three betting. Doesn't matter where what position he's in. He he's in there. Um, and I think, and it's actually crazy because I played the whole series with him, which was six tournaments, I believe, and he mm -hmm. didn't cash once. But in my opinion, he was the best player there was um, Adrian Mateos. He just lost um, every ball in. Yeah, I heard you talk about that in your last pod. He, uh, I mean, he just every right decision, he just happened to lose every flip and every all in that week. So for, for you, like Jimmy Farnsworth must think he's the worst in the world because he because played he six cash. tournaments and didn't cash. He didn't cash, But yeah. you know what? He was probably the best player there. And we're mentioning Jimmy Farnsworth a lot. I bet his- Shout out was... Jimmy, man. Shout out to Jimmy, the GOAT. Get his mind the goat. I tell him he's drawing debt. I keep it real. I say, Jimmy, you're drawing Man, debt. He said he's going to make a million this year, so we're going to hold him on to it. He's going right. to be at, at a milli by the end of uh, 2024. Yeah, good luck. Uh, uh, okay, players, they're hard to, hard to play against. You named them two. Okay, mental game. 
uh, every time you get on a pod and they ask you about the mental game, you never give details. You'll be like, oh, I just eat this, that, show up. So y- you must have a secret as far as mental game goes, as far as preparation before you sit down and as far as when you're in the tournament. Like what's going through your mind in the tournament? And let's say you take a couple beats, how, how, how fast do you recover? But mental game in general. Okay, I actually have recently, and I think this has, I've had a pretty hot t- what month? What year are we? 2024? 2024. I've had a good 2024 thus far. And I think probably the most important reason is I think my mental right now is very good. Where it always on the outside, I think was good. Like, let's say I get it in pre with aces and lose. I'm like, GG, good luck. But then I'm texting in my group chat what, how bullshit this is. And it's the same shit every day. I lost with two aces all in pre-flop. Fuck this. Where on the outside, you don't see me doing that. But I'm like texting my friends that. Where nowadays, let's say I bust with two aces all in pre-flop. I don't send one text. Nobody knows that's how I lost my chips. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Whatever. So what what changed? What 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 caused that that little switch between? So you I, said at first you weren't showing anything on the outside. You, I mean, which I, you I think I've always anything. been good on the outside. I've now, seen you take some beats and some punches, and you just walk away from the table, GG. Yeah. And you, I don't talk when when that happens. To I'm just walking away from yeah. the table. I'll hit I'll, you with the GG. Good luck. You won't see me calling anybody a name or anything. I've always taken it well. But I've on seen the inside, I've witnessed that. But yeah. what changed now? Like why? You said you would you would keep it you would keep it bottled up back in the day. What changed now? Not bottled up, but I'm texting my friends on my phone how fucked up it is. Which is normal. We're human, of course. I'm like every day I'm losing the same way, and you know what? Shout out actually here. Shout out Jake Farrow for this because he taught me that this was the victim mentality. So I would text him, "This is bullshit. I lost with aces again. Fuck this." And he's like, oh, it only happens to you, right? Like, the world's just out to get you. It, it happens to everybody. And of you know course. what? Usually the better player is going to get his money in good. So, yeah, you're going to lose more often that way than the worser player. That's just how it goes. Blame you know? Big... So, you, you still didn't answer that question. What changed now? What was the switch? I don't know. That... I think maybe playing Poker Go and watching these guys take some beats and just acting like fucking nothing happened. Truly, that it takes a lot of work. There's nothing you can do. Poker's a decision game. You make your decision, and as long as you're good with your decision, whatever. So if you get fucked, if you made the right decision, how can you be mad? You couldn't change it. See, that's that. That's how it works on paper, but in real life, it's hard to. For to sure, enter. but you know what? Truly, now I actually just busted a, my my tournament today with fucking two aces, and you know what? I, I fucking left there with a smile on my face. I got some good pizza and I bought a pair of shoes. Damn. Okay, uh, so the mental game we covered. What's your ritual before? Did we cover okay. mental? Are you? Fu- I don't know if you're fulfilled with the answer. Is that I'm all right, fulfilled. Fred? I'm fulfilled. So, I mean... Um... You just can't poker tor- tournaments, a lot of barons. Sometimes you're a lot of the time you're gonna get it in with the best hand and lose. And rather than tilt and ruin the rest of your day, just be happy. Whatever. Who cares? Oh, but actually, why I've done better this year is so when that used to happen to me, let's say I'm down to ten bigs after that because I covered. Oh fuck! I gotta get them chips back. Where nowadays, I don't look at it like I had this amount of chips. Doesn't matter. I think one of your best attributes is short stack. I mean, short stacking. I'm talking like yeah. 10 to 15 bigs. I've never seen anybody People... play even like even like seven, eight bigs to 15 bigs. You play that stack better than anybody I know. And I think that's part of why you make deep runs and why, because you can turn it around. Like you're pro- never you're never dead in tournament poker. So people have 80 bigs and they get fucked in this big pot, and now they're down to 20. Their tournament is over because they just had all these chips. How about 30 and 40? Once it's under starting stack, they feel like they're short and they start shoving yeah. 30 and 40 big blinds. It's actually this. Uh, I just got fifth in this 1600 at Venetian, and when there was nine left, oh my god so tilting i hero call this guy on the river i have king queen high i hero call him he says you're good 
and shows me ace deuce, ace high. That's so, the worst. I lost, but that's not the point. It put me down to two big blinds. This final table, nine left. So the big blind was 50K. I had exactly 100,000. The starting stack in the tournament was 40K. So I have two and a half starting stacks with, with nine left. And there was 380 players, I want to say. Most people, they're, they're all in blind the next hand. They're it's done. Over. Yeah, they're done. I got fifth. And I'll tell you what, when there was seven left, I was first in chips. That's sick. You are never dead in tournament poker. Like, truly, people say chip on a chair and laugh, chuckle. I, the guy that fucking won the tournament was down to 37,000 at 20K big blind. Wow. A blind and a half. <clears throat> that's you why are the never pros, dead. That's why the pros at the final table leave that one chip behind. Yes. Um, what's it called? Somebody was telling me today um, on GTO Wizard, there is no all-in option anymore. It is all in or it's like they leave an annie behind or something so it's not fully all in it's i don't know how it works i don't have the program you want to leave a big blind behind actually yeah leaving an annie behind because that annie you can like quintuple yeah. and and there is no there is no all in sizing apparently really? on the app now it's like because you're always leaving the annie behind and icm spots final table yeah. spot yeah that's sick so uh, um, have you done any solver work so far or still no solver work? Me personally, no solver, but I mean, I, I know I know what a solver would say in certain spots. I'd say with Negranu, a lot, if like there's a hand or something, especially in the ICM spots, like I remember there was one specific hand. I was playing this 3,500 and I busted three off the money and I made an aggressive three bet shove with fives and uh, for like 24 bigs, like probably a punt. It's good for chips, bad for ICM. What hand and, called? And like, he'll run it, like he ran it. I don't even think he did it. I think he has someone running the solves for him, but whatever. But like, he'll report back what the solver said I should have done and stuff like that. So I'm not doing it, but I'd say every once in a while, I'll tell somebody a hand and they'll run it for me, I guess, and tell me the solution. So I don't know if you'd count that. Um, uh, yeah. I don't um, have a computer. You're not going deep right in the now. solver world, but yeah, you're running some spots. Uh, but but you're obviously studied in ICM spots because I heard you say that you're watching a lot of final tabling, like final tables on. I what used to watch the GG Super Millions final tables all the time. Uh, GG Super Millions is uh, online, right? Online 10K, card space up for the final table, best players in the world. There's no better study tool. Anyone who's taking poker tournament poker seriously that isn't watching that, you're just an idiot. I'm sorry. Because that is the best fucking... That, that really helped me in tournaments. Okay. Advice for someone just starting to play poker. Let's say you have, you have to do it all over again. Going back to 2014. What would you do different? And what advice you would give somebody just like going up the ranks? They're just starting with tournaments. I'm not going to say cash because we're... For me, I wouldn't do anything different because I think everything worked out for me and I'm not where I want to be yet, but I'm fucking getting there. I'm in a really good spot right now, doing very well, no complaints. So I don't think I changed a thing. I've had some adversity along the way and I kept fucking playing. And now look at me, let's go, you know? That's, you're gonna have adversity in poker, there's no doubt about it. Shit it's works never, out. Um, straight lineup. I, I always said, you know, if I see like a kid in college and they ask me some sort of advice, I try to steer them in the cash game direction. But you know what? I'm starting to change that, I think, because you really can fucking make a killing playing these tournaments. But you just have to have a good mental. Like, you can't be results oriented. Results matter for sure. But if you're getting upset because you got it in good and lost, like you're, pl you're in the wrong business. So let's say somebody just getting into poker and they start playing tournaments. What's the first thing you tell them to do? I would say there's one thing that's by far the most important, and I'm sure everybody says it, blah, 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 bankroll management, bankroll management, bankroll management. But that is legit. Like, you, you have to be all in in tournaments just over and over. Like, you have to be. You'll never win if you're not. So if you're not rolled for the tournament, like, if you're scared to bust, like, you're drawing debt. You might sneak in for a min cash, but, like, is that what you're playing for? Min cash, Jeremy. 
Yeah, I, shit, if I'm short on the bubble, I'm trying to sneak into that money. But that's not the goal of entering the tournament. You, you really just cannot be scared to bust out. You have to go for it in spots. You And if you bust, that's fine. Rebuy. Let's go back to one thing. Um, I told you that group chat, they asked me, they said something like, is Jeremy being aggressive? And I told them that it's never one aspect that makes you a good tournament player or not. It's never just like being aggressive or going all in with Ace King every time you get. It's never like one aspect. It's like school. It's like high school. You have to be good at everything. You have to be good at the mental game. You have to be good at being yeah. balanced. You have to be good at doing the math, uh, calculating pot odds. Um, you have to be good at all the aspects of poker to be good. You have to be, uh, you know, even keel at the table. You have to be focused. The reason so, why tournaments are so amazing is because people don't understand. Like, there are so many different parts of the tournament. Like, there's early stages where you're 100 bigs deep. There's middle stages where you're 40 bigs deep. There's going to be a point where you're 10 to 20 bigs deep. You have to play. You have to have so many different strategies to be successful in tournaments. If you're just balls to the wall, aggressive, like, you're not going to win. You, at some point, you're gonna buck. Like you're just gonna yeah, fuck up. Yeah, being aggressive is just like a large brush. That like just being aggressive. Of course, you have to have it in your arsenal. Aggression. Like you can't be passive and and let everybody run over you. But it's not just that. And that's why we like tournaments. We like the different aspects of it. The short, the the deep stack early. You know, the middle stack and middle stages, and then the ICM spots and. There's different dynamics. It's not like a cash game where you always have, you know, 200 big blinds deep. And I would spots say are come up. the, I think I have two very good traits for tournament poker, or that's the wrong word, but I think I'm successful in tournament poker right now because A, I'm beyond balanced. Like I'm too balanced. Like I'm balanced in spots. I just shouldn't be balanced or I don't need to be balanced in. But for me, I like, I just think it works for me. Balance like, is it, always a thing for you, even though I I talked with you before about exploitative play and sometimes like in some spots you don't have to be balanced, but I know it was always a thing for you and you always know knew how to apply it in game. Yeah. Do, yeah, do I, I think, need to have a four bet bluffing range in a 200 daily? No. Do I? Yes. And like, it's not needed. But nobody's like, four betting. In the but, 200 binds, nobody's four betting anything except aces. You see a four bet, it's aces. Like if you have kings, just snap fold. I, it's never queens. It's never I, jacks. Uh, yeah, I was five betting the king six suited the other day into yeah. Landon. Shout out Landon, a former Tampa guy. Landon, Landon, I saw him crushing. I saw him win a, a win. He, a be, he beat me heads up that night. 